Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Mustai, and I'm so excited to talk about burnout with you. Um, so welcome, welcome to Recon Village, and let's dive into my talk. So hold on for one second while I pull up my slides. All right, I hope you all can see it. I'm just gonna guess that you can. So welcome to the burnout talk. I'm looking forward to sharing this. I know that right now we're dealing with a lot of issues when it comes to COVID-19. We're dealing with a massive pandemic. And then also on top of that, many of us may have been burned out right before the pandemic or now it's making it worse. Or maybe you're experiencing burnout for the first time ever now, because let's be real, there's no we're stuck inside and we don't know what's gonna happen next. Humans, we like to have this feeling as if we have control. For example, we like to know that we have this ability to predict what to expect the next day or be able to plan out a trip in a couple of months or weeks, even though let's be real, we never really can predict everything every single day, but we have this feeling that we have some sort of control of our life. At this time, it's very hard to have control over your life because with everything happening all at once, you're stuck inside and all the things that you used to do to reduce your stress or to see people, um, be around others, is now taken away. And this leaves you in a situation where your work and your personal life is now off balance. And when our personal life and work life is off balance, that's when we start facing burnout. So I'm excited to share this talk with you. Um, and please note, I'm there to answer any questions that you may have. So let's first dive into you in case you don't know who I am. My name is Chloe Mustagi. I'm the VP of Strategy over at Point3 Security. And when I'm not that, I'm an ethical hacker advocate, meaning I'm trying to fight for rights for the hacker community. Um, I definitely am one of those people that I'm tired of the public perception that hackers are terrible people and are criminals, when in reality, those are malicious actors and cyber criminals. Um, so trying to change the narrative of that and trying to update the public perception of what a hacker really is. Um, when I'm not doing that, I'm also the president co-founder of WOSEC, Women of Security. We have chapters all over the world. Um, founder of We Are Hackers, formerly known as Women Hackers. And we basically are a private online community of hackers that have been our marginalized genders, pretty much. And we hack at all the different levels. We have workshops, events, and so on. And by the way, Bosek and We Are Hackers are completely free, so feel free to join. Um, I'm also a hacker book club organizer. Minnie and I created this hacker book club which we basically read a new book written by a hacker member or someone who wrote about the hacker community every month. And we, we, we meet every week at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays. Um, next week, we're gonna start up, I believe, the red team edition of Tribe of Hackers. And yes, we hope to have people that are mentioned in the book come and attend. Usually we do, and also the author. And last but not least, I also have a podcast with ITSP Magazine, The Uncommon Journey, with Phil Wiley and Alyssa Miller. And basically, we, we interview people that you usually follow on Twitter um, to find out how they got into InfoSec, what are the things that they've learned along the way, and also ask them random questions, such as what's their favorite drink or what book changed their life. Um, that is my website below. Feel free to learn anything you want about me. It's probably on there. Um, and also, I am on Twitter and Instagram, so feel free to follow if you like. So I want to start painting some scenarios to get you understanding what burnout is like. And so I'm going to give you different scenarios to know of. Um, these are usually signs of knowing you have it. Um, and also signs of others having it. So keep an eye on it, just in case if you may not be experiencing it, but your friend or family or colleague is, that you'll be there to support them and give them guidance. And also let them know that therapists are also there for you. Um, so I want you to do is picture that you're driving, okay? And while you're driving, you're about to merge into the left lane. And in that moment, you're thinking, should I not look in my mirror? By not looking in my mirror, that means if I get in a car accident, 
I don't have to do that task or that assignment or that project. I can actually get away from work or I could get away from family. I can get a break for once so I don't feel as trapped. Another scenario. It used to take you maybe a few minutes to respond to an email. Now it's taking you 10 minutes, maybe hours, maybe days, and then weeks. And then next thing you know, your inbox is so overwhelming that just going to it starts causing some tense and anxiety and anxious beliefs and thoughts that go through your head because you're overwhelmed and feel stuck. And you don't know where that energy is, that passion, that drive to be able to respond to all those emails on time. Another scenario for those that stuff like deal with burnout is remember what I said at the beginning, which is burnout usually occurs when your personal and your work life is not balanced. Well, think about it in this way. You have friends and family, they always reach out to you at times, and especially during a pandemic, they might be reaching out a little bit more than usual. Even people you've never heard from for years are now checking in on you. But for some reason, you keep declining calls or you don't respond to messages or you just kind of see your friends and family members or colleagues as a task that each person is another project that you have to take on top of this already overwhelming amount of projects and assignments that you have. Um, and granted, yes, you could be busy and that's why you don't pick up your friend's calls or respond to text messages. That is true. Busy is due. But when you're burned out, you also do it because you start seeing them as a task and it's overwhelming. With burnout, it can also cause these sudden emotions such as sadness or anger over little tiny things where basically you used to be able to be calm and collective, but now you're starting to find yourself struggling to do that. You'll read a tweet and then you just kind of want to throw your devices or I don't know, flip over a desk um, <laughs> by seeing just a tweet. Um, or you can be watching some commercials and you see a puppy and then you start wanting to cry. So the thing about to know about burnout is that your emotions are not technically all over the place. The thing is, is that you can easily get agitated, sad and angry because you're feeling like you're stuck somewhere. You feel maybe lonely, um, but the feeling usually that people get when they're burnout is this feeling of being trapped and overwhelmed, feeling like, you don't know how to get away from it, where you're just sitting there and no matter what you do, you just feel overwhelmed, exhausted, and you just feel like, what is going on with my life? And of course, when you're burned out, there are times where you'll procrastinate a lot. I mean, I'll, granted, I procrastinated definitely around assignments or studying for a test, and I'm sure you did too. But the thing is, is that due dates are there and we'll find ways to procrastinate or push them out if necessary. And this is common and this could be anything from family uh, events or it could be your work events and whatnot. Um, due dates being pushed out is something that people that are burned out just are like, you know what, I can't deal with it for next week. I'm going to do the next week and then the next week and then the next week. But overall, when we talk about burnout, usually we have this situation where we just feel so, so tired. No matter how many hours of sleep that we get, we just feel so tired and exhausted. Uh, that means like, say for example, you slept nine or 10 hours, but you still feel so tired. And you know, it's kind of like this image where you feel that tired. Or better yet, maybe this image rings a bell for you where you're just like, I just, I can't focus on anything. I think I'm going to listen to music. Maybe that will help. Or you just like, I just need a break. I need something. But you're still stuck in that chair. So we're going to talk about burnout. And a good descriptive way of saying what is burnout is basically imagine you are your phone and you're on the red part of your battery. It's basically you're at very low battery and you feel like you need to be recharged and everything like that, but it's hard to get there. 
And I just want to remind you guys, I'm not a therapist at all, but I have gone through burnouts, ups and downs, but I know how to fix it and prevent them before it gets worse. Um, I did take a break for the first time in two and a half years in July for one week to recharge my batteries finally. It was long and overdue. Um, but I just wanna let you guys know that it is very possible to prevent burnout and also um, to get out of burnout. And it's most important is to be able to know and recognize that so then you can get back to normal. But I do want to let you guys know that I do recommend seeing a doctor and it's not just because they're around burnout and emotional stuff. But the other thing is sometimes people feel burned out because they're lacking certain vitamins in their body. So it's really important to get your vitals checked. Um, for example, last year I felt very tired and I didn't know why. And I thought, oh, maybe it's burnout, but then I didn't feel like it was burnout. But I went and I got checked and my iron levels were a little bit low. So I had to take some iron to get back to normal with energy. I got it like within a few days afterwards. So the thing is, it's really important to get your blood checked and make sure that your vitamins are all good, especially many of us are, are depleted on vitamin D. So it's really important for us to make sure that we're hitting all our vitamins, especially when we're stuck inside and during a pandemic. It's important, you gotta take care of your body. But what is burnout? This is the actual term, which is the burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. Below there is a quiz that you can take um, to see whether or not you're burned out. Now, I just want to let you know, if you enjoy the work that you do and where you work, chances are that quiz is not going to be as helpful for you. Um, that is the one thing that I've realized. So. If you love your job, I think the best way how to know whether or not you're dealing with burnout were those scenarios that I painted for you a little bit earlier. And so this quiz is really good to know because it can let you know if you're already in that burnout phase. But you also need to be aware of it. So I'm gonna teach you some ways how to prevent burnout. And then from there, we'll go into, if you already burned out, what to do next? So let's first dive into how to prevent burnout. Now, usually they say to you, oh, you need exercise. You need to eat a balanced diet, practice good sleep habits, ask for help. Well, that's just great. However, I'm in the middle of a pandemic. So where am I gonna go exercise? Gyms are closed. Eat a balanced diet. I can't go to the grocery store all the time because every time it puts myself and my family or friends at risk. Practice good sleep habits? Yeah, that would be nice to do, except that I have insomnia that I'm going to get this or someone's going to get it or something and I'm going to lose someone. How can I sleep? Also, the world just seems like it's on fire, especially in the U.S. It seems like everything is on fire. And But the good news is you can still ask for help, right? And I just want to touch on those things. Exercise, yes, that would be great. And you can, you can do some workouts at home. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there, and it's important for you to try. Um, eat a balanced diet, just, and just be cognizant of what you're putting into your body. And it's, for example, um, usually when we're stressed out, we crave salty, sugary foods. So just be aware if you're taking in more salty, sugary foods. Um, that might be one of those things you want to try to avoid, especially before bed, because that's not going to help you sleep. Um, so I do recommend eating a balanced diet. You know, be healthy, treat your body well, because your body will reward you in return. Um, practice good sleep habits. I understand insomnia is a big deal right now. And I know the first few months of the pandemic, when it started becoming a real situation, I was struggling to sleep because all I was thinking about was, am I going to give this to my parents and I have, I'm going to be responsible for their death. And that was really hard to try to sleep through the nights. So I do understand that. And there are some examples that I will provide for you, not examples, but things that you can practice to try to get better sleep. Um, and lastly, ask for help. That's never been a problem, especially in our community. All you have to basically do is tweet and tag and people will respond. Um, we're pretty good on that. But let's first dive into how to prevent 
So self-awareness, remember, you have to be aware that you're in burnout. And many of us, if it's our first time, we don't know that we're burned out until maybe after this talk, you realize, oh my God, I've been burned out for such a long time. I had no idea. This, this makes so much sense. And that is a possibility. I didn't really know about burnout until like a year or two ago, but I definitely dealt with it in the past. So being aware that you're going through it is going to be really important for you. So how do you know whether or not you're burned out? Remember those examples I gave you? Those would be good guides. For example, no matter how much sleep you get, you just still feel tired. Um, you feel like you have no passion or drive at work. You feel overwhelmed. You can easily get angry or sad and agitated. The general feeling of feeling like you're stuck. These are all those signs. Being very anxious about every day when it comes to work and logging in. That's another sign where it used to take you like a few minutes to respond to an email and now it takes you much longer or you just don't want to respond. That's a sign. So these are signs to recall those. Now, it's also important that when you're dealing with burnout is to remind yourself of things that are positive. Even if you're going through a terrible time, there should be at least three things that you're thankful for every single day. So I do recommend that when you wake up, think of three things that make you happy, that you're thankful for. Um, and then before going to sleep, give three things again that you're thankful for and change it up the list. And if you don't want to do it like twice a day, it's totally cool, you could just do it once a day. But it's there to remind you that there are some things to be happy about in the middle of an extremely stressful time. But also having self-awareness, it's really good is to journal it. So I have a journal or diary, whatever you want to call it. I write in it. Um, I try to do it at least once a week. Um, and what I do is that I write by hand. And I do recommend, if you can, write by hand. Um, there's something about it um, that's really, I don't know the quite good word for it, but it's very therapeutic. Um, there's something about releasing your hand and being able to write whatever that's coming into your head and like deep down inside. So the thing is, journaling is really good because after you write in your journal, go back to other uh, times that you wrote in there and try to see if there's any patterns. So patterns such as like using a term trapped multiple times or feeling overwhelmed or whatnot, you want to keep track of the patterns that you're seeing. Because once you see the pattern and recognize the pattern, then you're able to start working at fixing it. So it's really important to journal, write it down. It helps bring that self-awareness also to know what's going deep down inside that you are not aware of. Because we're constantly distracted, right? So it's very hard to like, basically know what's going on with you sometimes. Um, and so you guys also know that I'm one of those people that I hate my devices at the end of the day. Um, I don't recommend throwing it on the ground. There are definitely times where I read something on Twitter and I'm just like, are you kidding me? And yes, there are times where I'm like, I'm going to throw my phone on the ground. But at the same time, I'm like, yeah, that's going to cost me some money that I don't want to use. Um, but what I mean by, you know, you're breaking from your phones, your devices in general. I mean, take a break. I do this thing called a device detox. And I know that sounds very goop or goopish, I guess. But the thing is to know is to turn off your devices, get off of social media at least once a week. Um, that means pick one day of a week that you take at least, I would say, four hours and beyond to just be unplugged meaning you're far away, your phones are off, your computer's off. Basically take the time to do something new or learn something new. But the thing is, it's really important is to get one day per week where you don't do anything InfoSec related. I know, but Chloe, InfoSec is a lifestyle. I agree, it definitely is, but it will get you burned out. So it's really important to take one day off so you can readjust and be there more in your personal life because you have a life outside of InfoSec too, believe it or not. So do the things that make you happy and you enjoy, but it's really important is to take a break from your devices, take a day away. Now, if you do, make sure that you message your loved ones, letting them know you're going to be offline during these hours so they don't worry and stress out. 
but I do recommend doing this for preventative reasons. I do take one day per week off from all devices and social media. Um, and if I can't do a full day, I at least try six hours for one of the days. So just note that it's really good because you get to have that, get re in touch with your self-awareness and sense. Write it down. So the other thing that I do is I keep a to-do list. So this to-do list goes everywhere with me. And yes, everywhere in my apartment. Um, but the thing is that what you want to do is have it near you in your bed. That's going to be really important for you. And also to take it everywhere in the, with you. So the reason I say take it to you by your bed and have it next to your bed is because in the middle of night or right when you're closing your eyes, going into a nice sleep, suddenly this thing goes popping up and you're like, I, need, I forgot to send that email. Oh God, I forgot to do that thing. Oh, I need to send that email. What should I write in that email? And you keep thinking about it. And then you're not gonna fall asleep because now you're thinking of all these things. And you might wake up early in the morning thinking you have to do all these things. The thing is, if you want better sleep, write it down. For some reason, it feels like as if you're taking whatever amount of space that's now clogged by all the tasks that you have to do, then pulling it right out, kind of like a Harry Potter situation in a sense with Dumbledore, you know, when he takes his wand and he takes his memories out. Anyway, it's like that. It's where you free up your mind and you have more space to think and do other things. So having a to-do list is really good. It'll help you get better sleep. And if you're wondering, well, Chloe, I'm going to feel really anxious putting together this list because it's going to remind me of all the things I need to do and it's going to stress me out. I'm going to have an anxiety or a panic attack. I'm pretty sure of it. Let me just let you know one thing. When I first did it, I had the exact same belief. I'm someone who deals with anxiety. But what I did was that um, when I filled it up, it was five pages long. Now it's one page long. But when it was five pages long, it made me realize how many things that I am doing and made me take a step back to realize I need to start telling people no. Um, so knowing how much weight you're carrying will also help you address why you're feeling burned out. And then try to think of ways how to reduce that amount of work and also to get those projects off your plate. If that means having a conversation with a manager, that means having a conversation with a manager, but it's important to do that. Now talking about managers. Now, if you are a manager, we need to talk. You need to be there for your team members. You need to invest in your team members. That means you need to give them time off. I highly recommend doing a mental health day. For example, every month you give a day off to your employees and please pick a Friday or Monday because we love three day weekends. And basically use that time for them to do whatever they want. If it means going through old projects, if that means doing any of those things, do it, give it to them. They deserve it, especially right now, we all could use a break and an extra holiday every month, right? So I do recommend that. The other thing is to have, make sure you have something in place where every week your entire security team um, gets one day with heads down. I know it sounds really weird, but uh, it basically means no meetings day. So have one day per week where no one can give or set any meetings for any of your members. And just have that week every week where it's just blocked for them to be able to catch up on emails or to be able to do anything that they need to do to catch up. This will help them be able to breathe and relax. Now, the other thing that you should also do is make sure you schedule one-on-ones with your employees. And there's a reason for that. It could be anywhere from like 15 minutes to 20 minutes or whatnot, but making sure that you're both going through what projects are that person's working on and what to prioritize is gonna help them too. They need to know what to prioritize and you are there to help coach them through that. So I really do recommend that because then it allows them to be able to uh, reduce the amount of stress and pressure that is on them. Also, if any of your team members go to you saying, I need to take time off, give it to them. They need it. Um, chances are we could all use a vacation and to recharge our batteries. So if someone comes up to you and saying, hey, I really need to take some time off to get back to my normalcy, 
you should allow that. And also because a good manager invests in their people and see them go beyond them. So do whatever you can to do that too. All right, next one, how to bounce back. So we went over how to prevent burnout, right? So those are all those things that you can do. Now we're gonna talk about what to do if you're already burned out. Congratulations, it sucks, doesn't it? So we're gonna talk about how to bounce back. So the first thing first, you need to take a break. I'm sorry to tell you, but there is no way you're gonna recover unless you take time off. You need at least three business days off. And if you're like, okay, so three day weekend, no, that's not three business days. What I mean is five days off in return, right? So have the full weekend, and three business days, that's five days. You need to take at least that amount. Now, depending on how bad your burnout is and how long it's been since you took a break, I highly recommend you taking up to a week or two off if you can. If not two weeks, that's okay, just do one week. Now, if you're stressed out about taking a break like I did, that's why I didn't take a break for two and a half years, I was worried that I was going to basically push all my team members more work on their plate and I didn't feel like that was fair to them. Now, the important thing to note is that when you're burned out, chances are you are going to be missing deadlines. You're not going to be up to par with your team. Um, your team members are already carrying extra weight that you may not even know about because you're burned out because you're not 100% there or present because you can't because you're burned out. So it's really important for you to take the time off and have that conversation with your manager. Now, if you're wondering, how do I have that conversation with my manager? What you do is you schedule your one-on-one, -on -one, or hopefully you have a good manager who does one-on-ones with you, and tell them, I need to take some days off to recharge my batteries. I'm feeling burned out and overwhelmed. And I just, these are the, the weeks that I have in mind, and I need to do it probably sooner the better. And after you have that conversation with your manager, what you want to do is send an email to them after your conversation, basically reminding them that you had that conversation and that you're burned out and all that stuff, send it to them. Keep a paper trail. That paper trail is going to help you in your life, most likely if it's needed. I've learned one thing in my career, which is always keep a paper trail. Because the thing is, is that you need to protect yourself and it also reduces the stress of, am I going to lose my job for trying to take some time off? You shouldn't worry about that. You, now you have a record of it. So keep that also uh, forward that email to your personal email as well. So you have a copy of it as well in a personal account in case if you don't have your work account anymore. This is just really good practice overall. And I hate that we have to do that in this world, but we do. Just be safe. Um, now, when you take your time off, it's really important is that for your out of office message for it to be two days later than the date that you return. For example, if you're coming back on the 14th, say you're coming back on the 16th. And the reason for that, it gives you two days of responding to any emails in your inbox and to get through your flooded inbox. When I returned, I had over a thousand emails. And I'm so glad that I blocked those two days off just to respond to all those emails, which is my other point. Also make sure that you block one to two days when you get back or before you get back, that is. Just block the whole entire day for no meeting. So then you're able to be on top of everything that you're able to know what's happening and you can respond to all your emails. So you can get back to your zero inbox um, when you start. This is gonna help you right away. Now, the other thing to note about it is um, make sure that you tell your colleagues that if they need anything from you um, to keep you CC'd and keep you updated via emails, not through Slack or, or any other communication channels, because this is a way for you to know one place to look and one place to learn everything. Um, when you have multiple different channels of communication, this could be really hard on you when you get back and it could be very stressful and chances are things are going to get lost. So please remind them by contacting you via email and to seeing you during the time that you're gone so you're aware when you get back. Um, also, also having a project management type of platform is going to be really good so then you're also knowing what tasks that you're assigned to. Now the one thing that I do recommend also is if you're a manager and you're taking your time off, 
when you do come back, um, it's really important to also message all your, um, the people that report to you and let them know like you're back and is there anything that is highly important that you need to prioritize within the first 24, 48 hours of returning from work. Um, let them know, see what they say, and then you know find the time to do so. Uh, just remember that. And also, yes, right before you take your vacation, chances are you are definitely gonna need, you're gonna be very busy the week before. So expect to be pulling in more hours that week because of taking time off. I hope that answers all your questions about taking off because chances are, I know many of you were like, I'm kind of stressed out about doing that, but I need to do it probably. So there you go. Remember three business days is the minimum for taking time off to recharge your batteries. Now remember that to-do list I was telling you about, it's so important for you also to be able to learn how to say no. Chances are you've taken on a little too much than you can chew. I'm one of those people that's like, ooh, another project. Ooh, I need to do that. That'd be so cool. That's a great idea. Go running with it. And then next thing I know is I didn't really think of all the hours it's going to take. So the thing is, it's okay. But we learn, right? We learn from our mistakes. So it's, it's good to learn when to say no. When, and that's the hardest thing to do, is, especially when there's these great opportunities that come your way but it takes a lot of your hours and you just don't have it in you and you really need to find that work and personal life balance, I really recommend trying to learn to say no. Now, if you're someone who's underrepresented on your team, um, I hate to break this to you, chances are you're gonna feel a little bit more burned out a little bit faster than maybe your peers. And the reason for that is because chances are you're constantly having to prove over and over and over you deserve and you belong where you are. And that's going to be hard on you because chances are they also will give you extra work. I know by being a woman myself, I kept getting work that would be like an assistant or secretary and it would annoy me so much, but I would take it on anyway, just to prove that I belong to be there. And that's not my current job. This was at a previous one. And so it's really hard is to learn how to say no. And I know it's scary to say no because you're worried your job is on the line, especially in the middle of an economic situation too at this time. But just please note that you also need to care about yourself and you should be working at a company and have a manager that supports you and invests in you and wants to, you know, basically do whatever they can to be there for you. And if you don't have that, I think it's time for you to look elsewhere because there's plenty of companies out there that do that. Um, also, even if you're not someone who's underrepresented on your team, if you are one of those people that basically gets your work done a lot faster than most of your peers, or you're one of the top performers on the team, chances are you're going to be given more assignments, more tasks. You're going to wear multiple hats. So you're going to be feeling burned out a lot faster too. So just keep that in mind on that front. So it's really important for you in particular to also learn how to say no. If it's not part of your job, you don't need to do it. I hate to remind you. And of course, yes, if other people on your team need the work and you're not burned out, yes, you should help them. You should support them. That is how team works. So teamwork, you got to have it. You got to work together. Um, and helping each other out while you're all going through burnout at some point is going to be really important. But learn to say no if you're burned out and they're assigning tasks to you that has nothing to do with your job. Um, learn to say no. Now, remember when I said, you know, you need to take care of yourself. The reason you're burned out is because you're not also investing in yourself. And I hate to bring that forward to you, but it is one of those things that you need to know about. Now, stress is one thing. Stress is like, oh, I... I'll feel better if I drink that glass of wine or I'll feel better if I take a bubble bath or any of those kind of things. Um, but burnout is I can drink all the wine and I can take all the baths, but I would still not feel back to normal or feel like I'm a hundred percent balanced. And so that in itself is letting you know that you've taken on too many things. And this might be in your personal life. This might be in your work life. It might be a mix of the two. But it's really important to note is that even though we're trying to be there for one another, it's very hard to do that if us, we're not doing well ourselves. 
So that's why it's important to know that you need to invest in yourself, love yourself and take care of yourself, treat yourself right. And that's the important thing is that if you're working somewhere where they don't appreciate you, they don't want to invest in you, that's not good for you. At the end of the day, you shouldn't feel like that. And I'm so sorry that you're going through that if you are. I have been there and it's terrible because all you think about is, do, am I worthy? And that's the scary part because you feel trapped and you feel like you're worthless. And I just want to let you guys know that you are totally worthy and you shouldn't feel trapped. And if you're looking for something like a new gig, a place where they'll treat you better, heck, DEF CON is here and there are people here that work at companies and they're hiring right now. So let it be known. So start looking for work elsewhere. Keep the job that you have and just keep looking. And because don't be compliant when it comes to you and your well being. You have to take care of yourself because who's going to take care of you at the end of the day? And that's the hardest thing. So remember, when you feel overwhelmed, do a device detox. When you feel overwhelmed, invest in yourself. When you feel overwhelmed, ask for help. Please ask for help. We're here for you. The community is here for you. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the community. So please remember that. Um, when you feel overwhelmed, write it down. Do journaling, do diary writing, whatever you wanna call it. Do a to-do list, write it down. When you feel overwhelmed, take a break. Remember, take one day per week away from your devices and also from InfoSec. And that could be, you know, four hours plus, or it could be a whole complete day. Or if you're already burnt out, please make sure that you take off at least three business days. When you feel wrong, put yourself first. Remember, you have to put yourself first because you cannot be there for another person if you're not 100% there. It's unfair to the person and it's unfair to you. When you feel overwhelmed, know you're not alone. We've, you, I understand being overwhelmed is a huge deal for you. And I know that it can feel very isolating and you feel trapped and alone, but I want you to know you are not alone. There are people in this community that have your back. They're the ones that are gonna be there to push you forward when you're feeling like you can't keep moving. All you have to do is ask and seek it. And if you don't know where to go first, my DMs are open. And honestly, there's also this group called Mental Health Hackers, and they're a great group too. Um, there's so many great organizations out there that support people in the InfoSec community. So you should never feel alone or isolated because we're all here for you. So most importantly, I hope you get from this talk, which is always ask the question, am I balancing my work and personal life? If not, Take the steps to fix it now. And now you know how to do that because you know how to prevent and you know how to get back to normal. And like I said, I took one week off and I got way better and it felt way better. So just note that. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this. If you are taking time off, don't be on your devices. Don't be on social media take time off from InfoSec because that's also part of taking the break and recharging your batteries, okay? And lastly, thank you guys over at Recon Village for having me and thank you guys for existing and I hope you enjoy the rest of your DEF CON and if you need anything, have any questions, feel free to ask me. Also, if you feel like you wanna ask more privately, feel free to DM me. I am on Discord and I hope you guys have a wonderful DEF CON and please stay safe I know that you got this and I believe in you and please don't ever feel alone while you're dealing with burnout. So that's all I want to say. Thank you guys again and stay safe and I'll catch you guys. I hope later and hopefully in person next year. Um, but yeah, take care now. Bye-bye everyone.